10 secrets that Meghan Markle exposed to the public. Number one, racism. In her first extensive public comments, Meghan's mother, Doria Ragland, spoke about her first time meeting Harry, as well as her fears for her safety and regrets as a parent. She also described the last five years as challenging. He was 6'1", a handsome man with red hair, really great manners, he was just really nice, and they looked really happy together. Yeah, like he was the one, she said. Describing the early years of her daughter's childhood, Ragland, who is African American, recalled repeatedly being asked if she was the nanny as her daughter's skin was lighter. Her mother said, as a parent, in hindsight, I would absolutely like to go back and have that very real conversation about how the world sees you. When Meghan began to face negative media attention, Ragland recalled telling her daughter, this is about race, with Meghan replying, mommy, I don't want to hear that. Number two, her own family. The Duchess discussed her estrangement from her father following a controversy over whether he staged a series of paparazzi-style photographs in the lead-up to their 2018 wedding. Harry described the situation with his father-in-law as incredibly sad. I shouldered that because if Meghan wasn't with me, then her dad would still be her dad, he said. Meghan opened up about her half-sister Samantha Markle, who she said she hadn't seen since her early 20s, but who frequently spoke of her in the media. Meghan said, I don't know your middle name, I don't know your birthday. You're telling these people that you raised me and you've coined me Princess Pushy. Also interviewed on the show was Ashley Hale, Samantha Markle's estranged daughter, who Meghan remains close with. Megan really put them in their place. I know that's right. Number three, mixed race bias. In contrast to Megan's experiences growing up mixed race, Harry said that there was a huge level of unconscious bias in the royal family. The thing with unconscious bias is actually no one's fault, but once it's pointed out or identified within yourself, you then need to make it right, he said. Harry even addressed the time when he wore a German soldier from World War II's uniform to a private party in 2005, saying it was one of the biggest mistakes of his life, adding that he felt so ashamed afterwards. Do you think it was unconscious bias or do you think they knew what they're doing? Number four, socks and jeans. Meghan recalled meeting Prince William and his wife Catherine over dinner. Oblivious to royal protocol, she said she was barefoot and wearing ripped jeans at the time. She described herself as a hugger, but said that this can be jarring for some British people. I guess I started to understand very quickly that the formality on the outside carried through on the inside, she said. That formality carries over on both sides, and that was surprising to me. I enjoy hugs too, Megan, don't worry. But you know what I don't enjoy? Bare feet. You're rich. Wear some socks. Number five, no accommodations. After news of their relationship broke, Megan recalled how quickly she became the focus of photographers and the media. The royal family regarded such intrusion almost as a workplace hazard, according to Harry. As far as a lot of the family was concerned, everything that she was being put through, they had been put through as well, Harry said. So it was almost like a rite of passage. Some of the members of the family were like, right, but my wife had to go through that. So why should your girlfriend be treated any differently? Why should you get special treatment? Why should she be protected? I said the difference here is the race element. Number six, certain type of women. In a telling section on his experience of other royal marriages, Harry said, I think for so many people in the family, especially the men, there can be a temptation or an urge to marry someone who would fit the mold as opposed to somebody who you perhaps are destined to be with. 
The difference between making decisions with your head or your heart. And my mom certainly made most of her decisions, if not all of them, from her heart. And I am my mother's son. I personally look for anyone who's willing to keep a conversation with me. That's the mold I try to fit. Number seven, media attention. Harry brought up the now discredited 1995 Panorama interview with his mother, Princess Diana. While he acknowledged that she had been deceived, he said that she had spoken the truth. He said, my mother was harassed throughout her life with my dad, but after they separated, the harassment went to new levels. The moment she left the institution left her completely exposed, he said. Growing up, he witnessed pain and suffering of women marrying into this institution. He added, what happened to my mom? I didn't want history to repeat itself. We can agree that's a fair point from Harry, right? Number eight, press and paparazzi. Harry spoke at length about the media's ever-present role in his family life, starting with footage taken outside the hospital following his birth. Of the ongoing attention throughout his childhood, he said, the majority of my memories are of being swamped by paparazzi. He recalled learning as a young child how to handle the attention, saying, within the family, within the system, the advice that's always given is don't react, don't feed into it. My mom did such a good job in trying to protect us, she took it upon herself to basically confront these people. Footage of family ski holidays was included to highlight this. In one clip, Harry is seen alongside his brother Prince William and cousins princesses Beatrice and Eugenie as they are made to pose for the crowd of photographers. In an unwritten agreement that would ultimately allow them privacy later in the holiday but that was followed by another more intrusive clip, which led to his mother confronting the photographer. I see Harry as a snowboarder. He's got that Sean White build. Number nine, bow down. Harry said that his grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II, was the first senior member of the royal family to meet Meghan. Meghan recalled being told that she would have to curtsy while Harry said, how do you explain that you bow to your grandmother and that you all need to be curtsy, especially to an American? That's weird. He went on to say that members of his family were incredibly impressed, though were uncertain about the difference in their backgrounds, and thought that her being a Hollywood actress meant this won't last. The actress thing was the biggest problem, funnily enough said Megan. There was a big idea of what that looks like from the UK standpoint, Hollywood. It was very easy for them to typecast that. Number 10, Africa. The couple described how their relationship was cemented in Africa. When Megan traveled to join Harry on a visit to Botswana in August 2016, having only met him twice before. We had to get to know each other before the rest of the world and before the media joined in, said Harry. They spoke of living in close quarters with the bare minimum and how they were still so unsure of how the relationship would develop. Well, I guess we have kind of seen how the relationship has developed throughout the years, even if it was kind of rocky, especially with the media involved in it. Meghan's father staged photos before the wedding. Meghan Markle's relationship with her estranged father, Thomas Markle, has been the subject of much media attention since she and Prince Harry announced her engagement in November 2017. However, the scrutiny reached a new level in the days leading up to their wedding in May 2018, when the Daily Mail exposed how Thomas had worked with the Coleman Rayner Photography Agency to stage photos of him preparing for the wedding. These included pictures of him at Starbucks, using the internet to research Harry and Meghan, exercising to lose weight, and getting fitted for his wedding attire. The person who was pictured measuring Thomas was 17 year old David Flores and he was not actually a tailor but rather a student working at a nearby party supply store who had just been recruited to participate in this photo shoot. Flores described the experience as quote really strange. In an interview with Good Morning Britain, Thomas admitted that he had hoped to change his image and turn the public's negative perception of him into a positive one with these stage photos. But this plan has gone to hell, as you can see. He expressed regret for his actions, saying that he felt bad about his mistake. However, the royal family was reportedly very embarrassed by this incident and had previously issued statements asking the paparazzi to leave Thomas completely alone. 
So you can only imagine how embarrassed she is about this and it is definitely a personal family secret she wants to keep it in. Meghan Markle will have no trouble transitioning to life outside of royal family, according to Shinin Govani, a former friend of the Duchess of Sussex. Govani, who knew Meghan through Toronto social circles while she was filming Suits, believes that Markle's adaptability and ability to reinvent herself will serve her well as she and Prince Harry prepare to officially step down from the royal duties. In an article for Tatler, Govani described Markle as a quote, shapeshifter who is no stranger to picking up and reinventing herself. He also mentioned that within Toronto's social scene, Markle was known for being able to easily immerse herself in various circles and was always a fixture at shindigs. These comments came as Markle and Prince Harry made final preparations for their departure from royal life. Could her former friend just be salty about their former relationship? Or is there some truth about her being a quote unquote shapeshifter? Meghan's half brother is homeless because of her. Meghan Markle's older half brother, Thomas Markle Jr., has claimed that he's at the lowest point of his life and he says that he lost his job and his home due to his sister's fame. Markle Jr. was recently evicted from his rental home in Grants Pass, Oregon, and is now living in a small hotel room with his fiance, her son, and their two dogs. In an interview with The Sun, Marco Jr. blamed his sister's global fame for his downward spiral and claimed that he was unable to find a new job or a place to live due to being known as Meghan's crazy brother. Marco Jr.'s relationship with his sister has been strained for some time, with the half-siblings previously criticizing Meghan in the media and claiming that she turns her back on family and friends if she believes they are no use to her. Meghan's fans have called Markle Jr. and her sister Samantha opportunists seeking to exploit Meghan's fame for their own gain, and it kind of seems like it. However, Markle Jr. has claimed that he has been living under a microscope since Meghan's engagement to Prince Harry in 2017. Despite the strained relationship between Meghan and her half-siblings, it is clear that the Duchess of Sussex fame has an impact on their lives and has brought both positive but more negative attention in their way. While Meghan enjoys a luxurious life with her husband and son at Windsor Castle, her half-brother is struggling to make ends meet and find stable housing. It is unclear if Meghan and her half-siblings will be able to reconcile and repair their relationship in the future. But after all these years, does she really want to? Who knows? What do you think about the secrets Meghan exposed to the public? Do you think that there's more to be exposed? Whose side are you on? The Royals or Meghan and Harry's? Anyway, thanks for watching and catch us next time. Have a great day.